Okay, so now we're going to actually walk through the answers for the homework. I know you've got the answer spreadsheet, but sometimes it's, it's good to walk through and see the reasoning behind each of the, the answers as well. So make sure that you print out the answer spreadsheet before you actually start this video. And it's a good idea to go into a print preview and reduce it to about probably 70% or so so that you can print out the answer spreadsheet all on one page. All right, so let's actually start walking through the problems that we have. So we have here a study that was conducted for wearing whether wearing N95 masks reduce the health care risk of acquiring respiratory disease as measured by H1N1 influenza infection. And for those that develop influenza below, we can assume that it was in the unvaccinated population. So I've actually got our diagram drawn out already, and I'm just going to walk you through how I did these calculations. So first of all, we start out with 11 people who were determined to have been vaccinated at the beginning of the study. So here we've got those 11 folks. So since they were vaccinated at the beginning of the study, right away they're not at risk for developing disease. So remember to contribute person months, you actually have to be, you actually have to be at risk for the developing, development of the disease. So they all contribute zero person months. The next set that we have is on February 1st, six individuals in develop influenza. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. They develop influenza. It doesn't say that they died, so I'm going to have them with influenza throughout the course of the study for the entire year. So I like to show them in yellow when they actually have influenza. There are a couple of different ways you can do these diagrams. This is just one way. I like to show highlighted in color when they have disease. You'll see some other diagrams do it slightly differently. So here, since they developed influenza on February 1st, as soon as they developed disease, they stopped contributing person time, so they each contribute one person month of follow-up. So next we have eight providers who were vaccinated on March 1st. So on March 1st, we have eight individuals who are vaccinated. And as soon as they're vaccinated, they're no longer at risk of development of disease as well. So they each contribute two person months of follow-up. So that's why you've got the two there. And then On April 1st, three physicians develop disease and one is lost to follow-up. So I'm going to do my lost to follow-up first. There's my lost to follow-up. Not showing that person in yellow because they didn't have disease. And then I've got here my three individuals who developed disease on March 1st. Sorry, April 1st. And that physician was lost to follow up on April 1st, too. Sorry if I said March. So lost to follow up on April 1st, developed disease on April 1st. So all of those guys, the lost to follow up contributes three months, and the three who develop disease contribute three months. Then we have three who develop disease on June 1st. So here I've got those three. Again, they're in yellow for the remainder of the study. And if they develop disease on June 1st, then they each contribute five person months of follow-up. So we've got five for each of those guys. And then on September 1st, we've got 16 who are lost to follow-up. So we've got quite a few here, and I'm just going to put the L for lost to follow-up. There's no yellow because they didn't develop disease. But then for each of those, that's eight person months of follow-up. And then finally on December 1st, we have 
two individuals who develop influenza. So they're yellow for the month of December, and since they did not develop influenza until December 1st, they each contribute 11 months of follow-up. And then it looks like we've got 50 individuals, so that means we have 50 more, or 100 minus 50, that each contributed 12 person months of follow-up. So I do my little Excel trick equals 100 minus 50 times 12. And just a reminder, if you haven't watched that fundamental order of operations um, presentation or looked at that pre um, presentation, make sure you do that. It's just a select set of PowerPoints. So next we need to total up our total person time. So I'm just summing the 600 plus all of these other numbers. So you'll see in my total it's just the sum of N20 to N70 which gives me 799 person months of follow-up. So then we go right into our prevalence. So the first question asks, what is the prevalence on March 15th? So I've got our nice little line drawn here for March 15th. So we've got to go through and count the number of existing cases on March 15th. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it looks like that's it. So we have six existing cases. And then we need to look at our total population. And for prevalence, that means has anyone died? Has anyone been lost to follow up? Who's in our total population? And it looks like everyone is still in our total population. The guys who were vaccinated are still in our total population, even though they weren't at risk for developing disease. Remember, prevalence is just a snapshot of what's going on. So those guys are still in our total population for prevalence. So prevalence just equals the total number of cases on March 15th divided by our total population, which is 6 over 100, which is 0.06. So we can say the prevalence of influenza in the study population on March 15th is 6%. Now we want to do our prevalence on September 15th. So let's go back up to the top, and we're going to count the number of cases that we have on September 15th. Sorry for all the scrolling there. So I've, I've already drawn the line for September 15th. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six here. And we've got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that crosses at 12. So we've got 12 individuals with disease. Now let's look at who our total study population is. We've got one person lost to follow up here, person number 26, that we need to take out. Then we have our 16 who are lost to follow up here that we need to take out. So that's who we need to take out of our total population. So here you can see I've got the prevalence is the total number of cases on March, on, that should say September 15th, sorry about that guys. The total number of cases on September 15th divided by the total population on September 15th. So that's 12 divided by, and then I've got, I started with 100 people, and then I'm subtracting the 16 who were lost to follow up and the one who was lost to follow up. And again, this calculation does not work without the parentheses, so make sure you review that fundamental orders of operation slide. So that gives us 14.5% or 0 0.1445. So the prevalence of influenza in the study population on September 15th is 14.5%. Remember, you've got to have the sentences for these questions. Without the sentence, the answer does not make any sense. And now we want to look at the cumulative incidence. So here we look at the total number of new cases divided by the total study population at risk. So we want to come back and look at the number of new cases. So if anyone came into the study with disease, remember they would not count as a new case and they would not count as a person at risk. But we don't have any of those. All of our cases started um, during the study period. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. 
one, two, three here, one, two, three here, and two down here. So we've got six, three, and three. So that gives us 14 new cases. And then we need to look at what the population at risk at the beginning of the study is. And remember, these first 11 who are vaccinated on January 1st who came into the study are not actually at risk of development of disease. So we need to subtract those guys out. Everyone else was at risk. So we've got 14 new cases divided by our 100 minus 11, and that's just our total study population minus the 11 who were not at risk. And that gives us 0.1573. And we can express that as a percentage, 15.73, or per 100,000. Either way is fine. So the cumulative incidence of influenza in the study population during 2009 is 15,730 new cases of flu per 100,000, or 15.73%. Either one of those would be fine. And finally, we've got ID. So the incidence density is just the number of new cases divided by the total person time of follow-up. So we know we have 14 new cases. We already counted those for cumulative incidence. And now we need to go back and make sure we've, we've got the total person time of follow-up. And that's just our 799. Always make sure that you add the people who were at risk for the entire period of time. That's a mistake I see a lot, that you forget to add these extra 50 people or however, however many there might be. We've got, for this study, 799 total person time of follow-up. That's our 600 for the 50 who did not develop disease or were not vaccinated or who were not lost to follow-up, plus our other 50 in individuals who had various amounts of person time of follow-up each. So 14 new cases, 799 person months. So that's just 14 divided by 799, which gives us 0 0.01752. And then moving our decimal place over appropriately gives us 1752. So the ID of influenza in the study population during 2009 is 1,752 new cases of flu per 100,000 person months of follow-up.